Executive Chamber Number Eight, a walk in the Glen, composite, take two. Once, all of Watkins Glen was underwater. Then the ocean went away, and after the last glacier melted, this stream started digging its path down to the lake deeper and deeper by erosion. Of course, when the Indians lived here, they didn't know what erosion was. They thought this glen was a magic place made by the hand of God. Welcome to the top of a hill, a good place for taking a long view and for summing up. Since last fall on Executive Chamber, we've been analyzing some of the serious problems of our state, water pollution, mental illness, transportation. Other television programs and news headlines also feature the problems of our state and of the world until, if you don't come up for air once in a while, you could become convinced that life is one continual problem nowadays and that everything we believe in is falling apart at the seams. But that isn't so. Obviously, we have a long way to go to see that everyone gets a fair chance at tranquility and opportunity. But right now, in this day and age, for all the news about the things that are not right in our society, there are many people living a good life in New York State. I've been visiting the village of Watkins Glen. The people down there have their share of troubles, I'm sure. But they also seem to be getting along quite well. And they also seem to have a strong faith in things to come. At dawn, the mist rises from Lake Seneca, like a curtain opening for the day. John Brubaker, who runs Seneca Lodge with his father and brothers, goes bird watching at this hour. He saw a rare European bird last month, at once a bald eagle. In what used to be old Glen Springs Hotel, Father Hyacinth tells the boys attending St. Anthony of Padua that they may be a bit closer to God in going to a school high on a hill. The day patrolmen check in at Schuyler County Courthouse. There's only been one major crime of violence hereabouts in the past seven years. No juvenile delinquency to speak of. Sheriff Dean says this comes of everybody knowing and watching out for everybody else's children. At 6.55 a.m., Ray Latumsky finishes off his night shift in the boiler room at Watkins Salt by pulling the whistle twice. And then, once again at 7 o'clock. Between the lake and the entrance to the state park, where you walk up into the gorge, North Franklin Street is Main Street to 3,000 people of Watkins Glen. One of the salt wells is right on North Franklin. There's the office of the two weekly newspapers, the Watkins Review and the Express. Arthur Richards' 1938 Oldsmobile is another permanent, if moving, fixture. Arthur's been reporting uh, local news for the Elmira Star Gazette since 1928. It's almost a ritual in Watkins to pick up your morning newspaper from Irish's, which I understand is for sale now. 
Yes, Governor. Uh, after 27 years, I've decided to quit. Dora has been the family for 67 years, and uh, I think I'm ready to get out and try to find one of those eight to five jobs. I'm tired of the long hours, and I want something a little shorter. So I'm going out and look for another job. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, but best of luck to you. Thank yeah, you. Nice to see you. Nice to okay. see you. Thank bye you. Bye bye. Bye. Across the street, John Thompson runs the pharmacy built by his grandfather in 1867. Mr. Thompson plays the organ at St. James Episcopal. His wife, Helen, plays the violin in the Corning Symphony. Elmo Royce, furniture dealer, funeral director, is 83. They say he hasn't missed a meeting of the Rotary Club in 35 years. Yes. Mr. Royce, how are you, sir? Well, I'm glad to nice, know you, sir. Nice Governor. to see you. Yeah, yeah. How long have you been in business uh, here? I'll be 57 years ago today. When are you going to retire? Yeah, well, I, you know, the, the, my idea is not to retire. I don't want to retire until they carry me up on the hill, you know, feet first. Well, All right, sir. nice to have seen you. Yeah, see you Best sir. of luck to Thanks, you. Sir. See you again. First time we can okay. go to and say hello. Thanks, Lord. Weekday mornings, the school bus stops in the center of town. North Franklin and 4th Street. Hi, girls. Hi. How you all doing? Nice to see you. Yeah. How you doing? <laughs> Soon after, the school bus stops. Gus Panarides puts his fresh peanut brittle out. Gus makes his own candy and his own ice cream. He's also a scholar in Greek mythology and history, as some of the high school youngsters have found out. Punctually at 9, retired Judge Barkman walks to his law office, and the day is well underway in Watkins Glen. This way, boy. Come on, Shorty. Head straight through the center. Put your umbrella down there, kid. Put your umbrella down. Come on there, Red. Come on, Shorty. Stay in single file, balls. Walk right down through the center. What's the matter, huh? What's the trouble? Huh? What's the trouble? You don't want to talk? Come on, smile, boy. Come on, boy. Smile. OK. I have some words here that start with this blend, D-R. And I'm going to point to a word, then I'm going to ask someone to act it out. Let's look at this first word. Susan, could yeah. you act out that word? What is the word? Tell me first. Yeah. All right, you show me what you would do. Good. Now let's look at this last word way down here. Can you see what that word is? Drum. 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 All right, now let's play our drums. Come on, we've got a great big drum and we're marching in the band. Drum, 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 drum. drum, drum, this scooter soccer in Watkins Glen, the rules are few and far between. The fewer the rules, the less you break. The basic rules are the players on the scooter must remain seated on the scooters, and the goal guards must remain seated. Now, the scoring rules are throwing the ball against the wall on the opposite end of the gymnasium, one point. Kicking the ball against the wall, five points. Riding on these scooters develops quite a skill. 
It also gives the whole body a workout when they start playing this large ball. Pushing with their arms and pulling with their legs, they can ride forward, backward, or sideways so long as they stay seated. Now in this group, we have Jimmy Nitz and Charlie Brown. Been buddies for quite a few years, go to classes together, and then they play golf after school together. And I think they're probably two of the most together guys we have around. Now there's Brown with the ball. There's a nice pass out to get the referee that time. Come on, Nitchy, go hard, go hard. The Volvox is not a one-celled organism. It is a group of one-celled organisms. They are working together to form what we call a colony. The reason for forming such a colony is that it will make the organism much stronger in survival of its own environment. We have studied other lower protozoans, which exist in colonies also, but they are separate from each other rather than being attached. Such organisms are the amoeba, the paramecium, the euglena, the voracella. Kathy? Do we have to remember all of these? Remember all you can, Kathy. But most important is the concept that I want you to grasp here. Every form of life we've been studying should be a living laboratory for you, teaching you something about yourselves. The basic lesson of biology is that all forms of life have much in common. Animal life with plant life. All life is a form of holding hands. If you come away from this year with a heightened awareness of yourselves and of life around you so that knowledge rather than impulse or superstition guides the important decisions of your life, you will have remembered what was important to remember. But right now, knowing more about the Volvox will help you in preparation for tomorrow's test. The intelligence of the people is the security of the nation. There's a strong sense of forward movement and of caring in the schools of Watkins Glen. From Curly Auble, watching over the elementary school kids as if they were his own, to Ray Bailey insisting that his band isn't going to march in parades because he's teaching them music not physical training, to Jerry Lachlan, adding experiments in psychology and biochemistry to the requirements of his biology class. Of course, every Saturday morning, Mr. Lachlan still drives all the way to North Syracuse for a day's work as a garage mechanic. Like talking about the weather, there's a lot of talk about teachers' salaries. A block down Decatur Street from the high school is where Fritz Landsberg, MD, has his home and clinic. Dr. and Mrs. Landsberg and their baby son escaped from Hitler's Germany 25 years ago. People from far off places are still settling down here and making new lives. A pretty girl from Holland and a local insurance agent are getting married Saturday at St. Mary's of the Lake. She's a secretary at the Salt Works, which is the biggest industry in town. whistle is about the only part of our plant that we have not modernized. It's one of the original whistles that was put on the plant when the works was built by my father in 1898. We have not been too satisfied with the sound effects in the past several months, and we have even considered the possibility of discontinuing the use of the whistle because it isn't a necessary item insofar as the plant is concerned. However, on further thought, we believe that it's so much a sentimental attachment to all of us in the community that it's a necessary part of the community. So we consequently have decided that we will keep using it until we find a satisfactory replacement, which we are still in search of. 
Mr. Knut, here's the salt flake file you asked for. Thank you, Penny. How are you today? Pretty good. Nervous, I guess, for tomorrow. Oh. Don't worry about being late to your wedding tomorrow. We'll blow the whistle for you. All right, gentlemen. We've been filling ourselves with calories. Now let's try to work some of them off. Carl and Jack. All right, uh, fellows, let's sing one of our favorite rotary songs today. Number 27. Number 27. There's almost always a meeting going on in Watkins. To study school curriculum, to plan a recreation center, to do something for the community. This is the dining room of the Jefferson Motor Inn. The feeling of fellowship is absolutely genuine. Let's go. I did live new, near New York City for uh, two or three years right after the war. Um, we were sort of childhood sweethearts. We got married when I was in the Navy, and we went to Paramus, New Jersey, and we bought a house. The trouble is, Paramus just wasn't equipped to take care of this population explosion to the suburbs. Their schools were operating on uh, uh, half-day sessions up to the sixth and seventh year in school. The sewage uh, problem was quite uh, acute. And there was nothing really holding us at that time, so we came back to Watkins and uh, lucky enough to find a little abandoned farmland. We built a house there overlooking the lake, and it, it's nice. We like that. Um, Watkins is a, a typical small town, I think. There are some people, there's greatness in a lot of its people, and there's a lot of small people, too. There are people that have foresight. There are people that would like to keep the status quo. But all in all, it's a good life. In fact, you can't help but think every once in a while that uh, uh, it's a little too good. Maybe you feel a little guilty because there is so much hardship in this world. The land, Way back in 1933, this section of Watkins Glen State Park became famous because in this area, a deer was trapped here on a ledge. It was a beautiful story, and some 450,000 people came into Watkins Glen to view the deer. Six Frenchmen canceled their passage to Paris just to come in here to see the deer. An invalid mother was carried down those steps up here by her two husky sons on a stretcher. It was a great story. While the deer was trapped on the ledge, park workmen constructed a bridge in this section of the gorge. And after Labor Day, two men were lowered over the cliff. They came down, and they sort of pushed the deer this way. It ignored the bridge that had been constructed, scrambled up the cliff, and the last I saw of it, it was going up the hundred steps to the rim of the gorge, out of sight and out of the public press. In mountain town on ocean strand, a rotary is rotary. These are five of our nine children. Margretta, Peter, Robbie, Sam, and the Duke. In 1948, there really wasn't any place in the United States to race. And this was, all of this country is such interesting terrain, and Cameron had a red MG, and that's really how racing began at Watkins Glen. It has been a community venture from the very beginning. We stage a number of events during the year, and in the course of a season, over 100,000 spectators come to Watkins Glen. The premier event 
The United States Grand Prix, the first weekend on October, draws over 50,000 of these. The Watkins Glen Grand Prix Corporation is organized as a community venture. The corporation owns the land and the race course and operates the races. The profits go to the community chest and the local chamber of commerce. I understand from the local banks that a race weekend will leave well over a million dollars in Watkins Glen. The Rotary Bell means service done Where the web of life is spun It hates the day when men blame our one The brotherhood like Rotary Fritz Landsberg, family doctor, public health officer, incoming president of the Rotary, concertmeister of the Corning Philharmonic Orchestra, admirer of Thomas Jefferson. Well, I have been in Watkins now for 23 years, and I must say I am enormously grateful to the community who accepted me here. But coming here into this country, I found what I was told of, what I read, the endeavor of human um, spirits, stressing this more than the uh, material uh, power. I have in my waiting room some of the quotations of Jefferson, whom I think it was one of the greatest human beings ever trotting this world. Um, he was an all-around personality. For him, education was really finding himself and uh, finding his place in his nation and in mankind. And uh, this is what we all, I think, should endeavor, to stress more the human um, equalities and similarities than rather what uh, divides us. We are human beings, we are not animals, we are not plants, and if we are not good human beings, we are just nothing. This family Bible, uh, one of the ties which ties us back to our old uh, base from where we came, it is a German issue of the Holy Script of the Israelites with the world famous illustrations of uh, by Doré, Gustave Doré. This was an old family heirloom. Now you have here, for instance, the picture of the sin flood. And here how Noah sends out the dove over the receding waters. This territory where we stand now was once an ocean. And uh, therefore we have this big salt uh, findings here in Watkins Glen on these pages. You have, for instance, at the time that my parents married, my grandfather wrote in under the heading, I and my house want to serve the Lord. And then there is a tiny quotation by Schiller from the Song of the Bell. And therefore, who goes into the eternal union should examine himself whether the heart finds the way to the heart. I, Peeney Court, <coughs> take you, John Warren, take you, John Warren. For, my lawful husband, for my lawful husband, to have and to hold, to have and to hold. from this day forward, from this day forward. For, better, for better, for worse, for, worse. for, richer, for richer, for poor, for poor. In, sickness in sickness, and in health, and in health. until death do us part. Until death do us part. Take and wear this ring. Take and wear this ring. As a sign of our marriage vows. As a sign of our marriage vows. Take it near left hand, be any good, and then repeat after me. Take and wear this ring. Take and wear this ring. As a sign of our marriage vows. As a sign of our marriage vows. By the authority committed to me, I declare you to be man and wife. Kneel down, you John. May Almighty God bless you and unite your hearts in the enduring bond of pure love. May you be blessed in your children, 
and may the love that you lavish on them be returned a hundredfold. May you have true friends to stand by you, both in joy and in song. May you be blessed in your work and enjoy its fruits. May the Lord grant you fullness of years, so that you may reap the harvest of a good life, and then may he take you up into his eternal dominions in heaven. Go in peace, and the Lord be with you always. Toward evening, a stillness falls on Lake Seneca. The shadows in the valley climb up here to Lookout Point. If Father Hyacinth is right about being closer to God when you're up on a hill, then this is a special place indeed, as well it should be. Deacon Shea died of a heart attack while preaching a fiery sermon on the evils of drink. His epitaph reads, he fought whiskey unto death. Barrett Rothschild put his wife into a lifeboat and then went down on the Titanic. In 1959, they buried Frank Wilkie Severn. He was 96. He started publishing the Watkins Express. For 50 years, he gave the people something to read. He couldn't read the paper himself. He'd been blind since he was 10 years old. Elmo Royce has his own marker ready for when he retires. Carl Peter Landsberg, Berlin, 1935, Watkins Glen, 1952. The good doctor found a piece of native stone for his son. The people of Watkins Glen are not without tragedy. But all in all, they seem to be weathering the storms in their lives with great spirit. They seem to be getting along, getting ahead, realizing themselves each in his way. This is all I wanted to say. That for all the hue and cry about the failings of our society today, in this day and age, most people are leading a good life. But until everyone has an equal chance at a good life in New York State, the governor and the legislature in Albany will have much to do.